Good morning, everybody. Today is August 31st, last day of August. Dr. Vong here with your COVID update. I want to, you know, today's number is 280,000 cases, which represents the uh, cases that weren't reported over the weekend. But last week it was 260,000, which I said was crazy high. The week before that it was some like, you know, 160,000. And um, so these numbers are crazy. We are going like skyrocketing up. So anyone who thinks that we've plateaued or Delta's burnt out, you're, you are crazy. But today I want to talk quickly about um, monoclonal antibodies versus vaccinations. So there is this weird thought process that's happening right now in the anti-vaxxer movement. You know, like, you can't make me get the jab. If I'm going to die, then the Lord's calling me home. Okay, fine. I get it. But there are people lining up you know, in cars doing these monoclonal antibody clinics. And the, I want to compare monoclonal antibodies with the vaccine. So vaccine, you know, you get a little strand of messenger RNA that codes for the spike protein wrapped in a little fat cell. And they inject it into your body, causes an immune response and gets your body to form antibodies, different types of antibodies, not just one antibody, but different types of antibodies, and then form what's called memory B cells and memory T cells. Now the antibodies will go away over time, which it's supposed to. You don't want antibodies forever. That causes autoimmune diseases, for example. But you do want to respond to the vaccine and then your body has these memory B and memory T cells. So the next time that you are exposed to the virus, it recognizes, it's like priming the pump, your immune system recognizes um, these bad players and then forms the antibodies and, uh, and helps you get over, um, gets over the disease or keeps you from forming the disease. So remember, antibodies are inside your immune system is inside your blood so there's nothing that keeps the vac the virus from landing on your nose which i think is crazy where people go like what's the point of getting vaccinated if if you can still catch the virus and you can still uh pass it on well one transmission th through vaccinated people is less likely than than um, unvaccinated, just because you're vaccinated and you have viral RNA does not mean it's live virus, does not, just measuring viral RNA, it could, it's dead, it's dead RNA, it's scraps, that's what you're measuring. So when they're measuring viral load, like it's not the same thing as, it doesn't translate to transmission necessarily. And third, we know for a fact that vaccinated people, if they come down with a disease called COVID, it's much milder, much less likely to be hospitalized and, and very low chance of uh, dying, which means it's, um, it, the vaccine actually works. So it actually does what it's supposed to do, if, you, if people actually understood this. But back to monoclonal antibodies. So these anti-vaxxers and people who are not getting vaccinated, they'll say things like, I don't know what's in the vaccine. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, um, it's not FDA authorized. I'll use my natural immune system. And then what happens? They are lining up in droves for these monoclonal antibodies. Now, monoclonal antibodies, and it just, here's the thought process. These people are saying, I don't know what's in it. Well, you don't fucking know what's in monoclonal antibodies, do you? You don't know the difference, right? Monoclonal, and, and, and they'll say, I don't want anything that's made in the lab. I'm going to use my natural immune system. Monoclonal antibodies are made in the lab, <laughs> you know? And they're like, I don't want to take something that's experimental. Uh, vaccines have been around a long time. The monoclonal antibodies are the ones that are really experimental. I mean, like, but this, I'm talking about this mRNA vaccine, Dr. V. That technology has been in development for 15 years. I mean, it's probably 20 years since the early 2000s. And it drives me crazy. The, the more experimental treatment is actually the monoclonal antibodies. That, they've never actually done that until this pandemic. I won't take it because it's not FDA approved. Well, Pfizer was just fully FDA approved 
but the monoclonal antibodies are also under emergency use authorization. So I don't really understand. Like, what is the thought process here? You're not, all these reasons why you won't take the vaccine, but, but you would rather take the risk of using your own immune system. And then when you f start feeling bad, because <laughs> you know the meme about, <laughs> about when, man, when a man catches a, a cold. <laughs> It's about the equivalent of a woman giving birth. <laughs> so the second Uncle Billy starts to feel bad and has trouble breathing, they go get in line for these monoclonal antibodies, which are the extreme of everything they argued against. I don't get this reasoning, guys. So, okay, so let me tell you about monoclonal antibodies. Depending on which one you get, it's actually a cocktail of two or three antibodies that... Um, these companies that you don't trust, <laughs> these companies have formulated in a lab. Now they've tested thousands of antibodies and they found like these two or three are the ones that are best at neutralizing um, the virus. So they put it into a cocktail and then initially they gave it over uh, IV drip. And so they had to set up these IV clinics. Now they've formulated it that you can get it in four shots. So you'll get in four shots. And what we realized is that, you know, they were, because it was so new, and when last year when people were getting really sick, they were, they were using it, and uh, because it wasn't widely available, they said, let's save it for the sickest people. And so they were giving it to people in the ICU on ventilators and stuff. And then they realized, like, what's the point of giving antibodies when your body's already being overwhelmed by the virus? So they studied it, and they gave, they gave the monoclonal antibodies early in the disease process, and that made a difference. That was about 70 to 85% effective early in the disease. So by the time you're breathing hard, if you need oxygen, it's really too late. On Honestly, if you are on oxygen, it is too late to get monoclonal antibodies, okay? So why, like, why not get vaccinated? And before you even feel the symptom, your body is already creating antibodies to fight off this, vac uh, this virus, which is vaccinated people. Unvaccinated people, you have to feel sick first. In order for you to start feeling bad, coughing, sneezing, especially if you can't breathe, you've got a shit ton of virus already inside of you. That's the other thing I was talking about yesterday where people think like, like, oh, I got the coronavirus. Like they literally think like they have one virus inside of them. Like that's not one virus. You've got millions of viruses inside of you. And by the time you are, you are already starting to feel bad, you've already infected eight people. You've, you've already put people at risk and you're overwhelmed. The reason why you, you have symptoms is your body is, your immune system is already at war. Uh, against this virus, right? And you didn't know it this whole time. So now you're behind the eight ball. So you decide to go give this, give yourself these monoclonal antibodies, which are emergency use, made in a lab. You don't know what's in it. All the shit that you were arguing against, now you're willing to take it because you, because you're feeling bad. Now, you know, there's this, somebody sent me this video <laughs> from a husband. And she's like, man, this, this guy is going to give you a, a run for your money on the F-bombs, Dr. V. And man, my heart goes out to him. I actually watched it because it was like a, like a two-minute video. But the guy's wife has stage four cancer. And he has to take her to the hospital for treatment. And he's like, I'm like, there are no beds. There's no rooms. They're overrun. We had to wait for like hours and hours and hours. There's no staff, you know, and we're surrounded by all these people with COVID. And he made this point. He said, okay, for all of you who are so sure and certain that you've done your research, that you're smarter than these doctors, that you've actually like know what you're talking about and you don't want to get vaccinated. And he said, I want you to just man up, woman up, stick to your word. When you start feeling sick, don't come to the hospital. Don't trust these doctors. Don't seek treatment. And he goes, why is it? Why, why do you not trust the, the treatment, the vaccine, but you trust them to take care of you once you're sick? And I was like, motherfucker's right. What, what is the deal there? Like, what, you don't trust the vaccine, but you'll trust us to take care of you when you're sick. Like, what the hell? And, he, and he's like, you know, for people like my wife who, who have cancer, who have heart attacks, who break, fall and break their arms, 
who have bleeding ulcers. Like, man, like you do your part. You were so sure and so certain. So when you're sick, stay out of the hospital. I'm like, damn. <laughs> Crazy. So if you are feeling bad, again, I want to remind you, monoclonal bad antibodies is not the same as getting vaccinated. You're already behind the eight ball. You need to take it early. You'll be in line a long time, especially if you're in a, um, uh, a hot spot. It's not something that's preventive. Dr. V, I don't have COVID, so can I go get monoclonal antibodies? No, <laughs> there's nothing for them to fight. And they go away. They don't last inside your body. Um, and <laughs> they're made in a lab. You know, you're already behind the eight ball. It does not, monoclonal antibodies does not prime your immune system. It does not give you uh, lasting immunity or protection. And, um, you when when they when they give you the monoclonal antibodies you got to hang out for like an hour and wait and see make sure you don't have an adverse reaction <laughs> which is which is like what another reason why people won't get vaccinated i don't know how i'm gonna feel like i like adverse reactions are bad dr v go to this website and look at all these horrible reactions but here they come they they start coughing and sneezing and there are adverse reactions to everything there's adverse reactions to your little blue pill <laughs> <laughs> have you forgotten? If you have an erection for more than three hours, call your doctor, <laughs> Uncle Billy. <laughs> but you'll take that. Like, if one of those is good, let's take two. <laughs> like, what? Okay. Go back and take your horse dewormer. All right. I know you know more than me. Bye. I'll be back for another rant tomorrow. Love you. Stay safe. And remember, monoclonal antibodies are not the same as a vaccination. Ha, 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 ha.